G'day. In this fairly long video, I'm going to show you one of the ways that I get free bees. It's called a cutout. That's where you rescue bees from the wall of a building. Come on in. If I can do it, you can do it. I've got a few tips and tricks along the way. G'day, Mike from Aussie Mike's Bees again. This time it's a cutout from a sewerage treatment plant in this building behind me that's going to be demolished. And up on that top part there, there's two big colonies that the builder would like to remove before they start pulling the place down. It's inside here, and who knows what all these bits and pieces are, but that goes down into where the sewerage is treated. It's a little pony around here, but we've got to go up through that manhole and get onto the next level. So we'll just climb the ladder here. This should make it interesting to get everything out. The first one is over in the corner under that window. And there's bees crawling in and out there all over the place, pretty active. And then the next one, just above the door there, that's deceptive. There's a hell of a lot of bees going in there. It's a big colony. But what I've just noticed now is around the corner, up high, don't know if you can see it, but there's a lot of activity just above that wall. So I might see something else inside. But for now, I'm just gonna tackle these two. The one I'll have to do up on the ladder is up there. But first one, I'm gonna tackle this big one under the window. Should be fun. My plan of attack for this one is to get into this wall under the window here and remove that sheet because I know they're all behind there and maybe both cavities and any brood comb I get I'll put into this box elastic band them up in those frames put any honeycomb in these buckets and I'll use the everything bee vac to suck up all the bees in there Our primary objective as beekeepers in cutting out the comb here is to get as much brood comb as possible put into frames, into the boxes to ensure the survival of the colony. The way I've found most successful for me is to go in the order of honeycomb, other comb and finally brood comb. And the reason for that is this. First, you want the easiest possible access to the brood comb and often honeycomb and other comb just gets in the way. Second, you want to minimize the time that the brood comb is not covered by bees keeping it warm. Also, the queen is most likely with the brood comb, very unlikely to be on the honeycomb and empty comb. I'm using the vacuum to suck up as many of the bees as possible and that makes the wax much easier to get to. Once I vacuumed off enough I start pulling out the comb. Sometimes it still needs the bees vacuumed off the comb before throwing it in the bucket. Large sheets of honey comes out of this, soon filling up that bucket. That's this bucket completely full now, so out with a new one. Now it's time to start framing up the brood comb. This is essential to the survival of the colony.
Now you can see that I cut sections from the large cone that I've cut from the wall and then insert it into the frames and hold it in with rubber bands. It's also important to make sure that the orientation of the comb is correct so the cells on either side of the comb angle upwards towards the opening. So it's important that you put the comb into the frames in that same orientation. Of course you be as gentle as you can putting these in. There's bees crawling all over them and when the rubber bands go on some of them do get rolled, killed, injured. Just do your best. As you slice through the comb, you're going to be cutting into some of the larvae and they'll be killed. It's a numbers game, so you're trying to save as much brood as you can. What I'm doing here is scooping up bees from the wall and tipping them into the box. This will help keep the brood warm, they'll cover the brood that's in the box. I used to vacuum up all the bees and so when the brood was put into the box in the elastic bands there were pretty much no bees at all. And this method I'm finding a bit more successful. The brood is kept warm as I say so that gives them a better chance of survival. Don't be shy about scooping the bees up like I'm doing here. It's as if the bees are a fluid and they just effortlessly flow into, in this case, the lid of a bucket. And I didn't squish a single bee in that process. That's all the comb framed up now. Well, it's time to pack up, so I scoop these bees in. Vacuum up the stragglers that I can get, and that'll add more numbers into the bucket to tip into once back at the apiary. That's it for this colony. I've got that complete cavity all bucketed up, all the bees and brood into the box, ready to take home. On with the lid and then I strap it up to keep it all secure. I don't close up the box, there's a small entry hole, I'll just leave it like that. Tell you what, it's 
been a few hours, it's hard work. You can hear the vacuum in the background, so I've got a bucket of bees. I also have a box full of brood and bees. It weighs a fair bit too. I'm sure there's probably 15 kilos there. It bloody weighs a lot. I've got two buckets of honey. They're a good 20 kilos each. And another bucket of comb with nothing much in it. So she's been a bit of a day. I'm going to load up the car now. I'm going to keep this on because there's straggler bees all over the place. I've got maybe seven stings to the legs through the pants, a couple of stings through the gloves. So I don't swell up much for those sort of ones, but if I get stung in the face or the head, I balloon right up. I got that the other day, not much fun. I like to wear the gear. I'll load up and be on to the uh, next bit when I unpack them at home. So I got the girls home. It's been raining here for a couple of hours, not heavy. So we've got this box that I put all the comb in and bees. I've got the bee vat full of bees. I'll be happy to get out of there. And that little box right there is what I'm going to put them all into. And hopefully they'll settle in nicely and find a comfy home. The box I've got here is quiet. Back at the site are humming. The ones in the bucket of the vac, they're humming loudly. So I'm thinking I might just have the queen. If so, good, because I couldn't find her when I was looking. But it was a big nest, so I was going to be lucky to find her anyway. So fingers crossed that... She's in here and I'll be able to transfer them across and I'll stay put. G'day, here we are again. It's Tuesday, the day after Easter, and I'm back at this sewage treatment plant to take care of the bees in this structure up on this first floor level. I've got the first colony out, as you know, and now I'm gonna begin on the second colony, see how we go with that one. And then probably tomorrow I'll knock over the third colony. Pretty good uh, day ahead, but at least the weather's beautiful now. I'm not going to get rained on like last week. So we're inside this little structure and the colony I'm getting in is in this cavity above the doorway. I'm going to take this sheet off, see what's behind it and start cutting comb and gathering bees. A bit like the other day, got to knock off the bits of cover strips and so on so I can peel this away. take this opportunity to talk about safety. When cutting into walls like this, there's a potential to cut into existing services such as water pipes, gas pipes, and perhaps worst of all, electrical cables. I have a top of the line Bosch stud finder that detects electrical cables, metal, and wood. I use this to scan the wall surface before going anywhere near it with a blade. If you're planning to get your bees this way, I'd recommend you get the very best stud finder that you can afford. Now with this building, it had already been cleared by other trades before I came anywhere near it. The electrical was cut off and there was no water or gas pipes in the walls. One other safety concern here is working up a ladder. Make sure it's placed firmly and don't go too high on the rungs. Get a taller ladder if it's needed. Now the rest of this cutout was much the same as the first one. I won't show elastic banding up the comb. That's day two, bucket of bees, box of bees, put them into the new box. So this is their new home, hopefully they'll stick around. They seem fairly settled at the moment. We'll see how we go. But up here, I got so much wax. There was just about no honey out of that second colony compared to the 15 kilos I got out of the first one. Between those two, 
I got this much wax. I've got nowhere to stash it now, so I'm just firing it up the, the steam melter. I'll just leave the lid a little bit ajar so these ones that are hanging around there, once they realise it's getting a bit hot, they've they got an opportunity to escape. It won't be long before that water is boiling. This sort of one has this water spout over here that you can top it up with and that goes underneath and you fill that up and boil it up. Then there's this basket as you saw. So this is a basket, a lot of stainless steel. Underneath that there's a tray that comes to this outlet. So once all the steam gets up into the wax, it melts the wax, it all drips through the slotted stainless onto the tray, out the spout. I've just got a little bit of water in the bottom of the bucket so we can get wax out afterwards. And then we've got our first rendering of wax and then I'll dig the slum gum into the garden. So I'll just leave that, I can feel that warming up. Hopefully the girls will be smart enough to get out of there. So this is basically what I'll get. This is a first render from a previous bunch of wax. That's straight into that stainless steel bucket. And you can see where it takes the shape, where it spills into the water and then solidifies after it's gone under. But that's the first rendering. So I'm not fussed about how messy it is. So after about half an hour, the steam's getting up into it and that's wax and honey coming out. The honey will sink to the bottom. That's part of why I put water on there. That's what it looks like at the moment. So once the steam really builds up, that'll flow out of there really good. I'll give you a quick look inside. So pretty steamy, as you see. This is further 10 minutes down the track, going full steam. So that's really good flow there. Of course, the smell of it brings in the bees from all around. And this is just 10 minutes later, and it filled that bucket right up. It just poured out and it's still going pretty strong. Got a fair bit of wax out of this lot. And then yeah, a bit of spillage there because I didn't realise I'd wandered away for 10 minutes. And this is what you get. <laughs> it works pretty quick. Back again to get the third colony. Lots of bees flying around, the displaced ones from yesterday. Suiting up, I really don't want to get stung in the face. And this time, we're going to be getting up the top of the ladder for this panel. Got to knock that one out. There's a colony in there that's only set up in recent, in the last month or two. So what I think might have happened is that they came out of the one that I did yesterday because I couldn't find the queen, couldn't find eggs or young brood in that. So I'm thinking they might be queenless, but they might have swarmed and took up residence in the new spot, the new queen that uh, they created might not have made it back from her mating flight. I'm hoping that I might have got her anyway and she is mated, but who knows? They settled in this morning. They did orientations this morning. It looks like they're off and away to bring in resources. They seem to have settled in, so I'm hoping that's the case, but you can never tell with bees. They'll make up their own mind what happens. But in the meantime, I'll get into this third one, see how we go with getting them re-established at my place in my ever-expanding apiary. I'll probably drop in tomorrow with the vac to come in and pick up as many stragglers as I can because there's always clumps of them, especially overnight. I want to save as many bees as I can. As you can see, I've removed the sheet already. I'm using a smoker this time. It made a little bit of a difference, but not a lot. I'm down to steadily cutting out the honeycomb the same as the first day to get down to that brood. This is much the same process as the previous two colonies, so I won't show all the detail, you've already seen that. Certainly welcome any questions or comments about what you've seen so far. I'm just about done on the site on the third colony. It turned out to be a pretty big one. So I'm just vacuuming out a bunch. I had the buckets down the bottom, buckets of wax, and I've just taken those over to the back of the car there, ready to load in. 
and I've got the swarm box in the back full of brood, comb. Something of interest is that when they're displaced like this and they haven't got their home, they like to clump together like that. It starts off, just two of them might be together. And then more and more turn up around and just gather. They don't know anything about social distancing, but it does make them easy to vacuum up. So I just wait for them to clump. A pretty black one there. But I'm not going to spend the time to vacuum all these up. The that's almost full as it is. And it's pretty warm. I want to get them back in their new hive at home so they can settle in. All right, I've packed up. You can see all these loose bees. I don't worry about trying to get everything. There's no point. I have a station wagon, so I can't just put them in the back of a, of a ute or pickup. So I just drive home in my gear and eventually all these loose bees go up to the windscreen and on the glass up here. It's hilarious. I just wonder one day whether I'll get pulled over by the police and I say through the open window, do you really want to have this conversation? Who knows, that might happen one day. That'd be funny. I'm just gonna close up the tailgate here and start driving and get these girls home. You can see how many there are there on the outside now. Let's see how many are still there when we get to the other end, eh? Leave the bee vac going to keep them ventilated. And that way they won't overheat. If you took them home in a bucket in, it's fairly warm. It's about probably 20 degrees C at the moment. It is autumn. You know, they could perish in that heat. Uh, mainly the heat inside the bucket where they're generating it is much more than the ambient temperature. With the bee vac continuing the air circulation, it's uh, almost 100% success rate getting live bees back home. It's a really good device. The battery is meant to be good for up to six hours, which is pretty good. And yesterday when I drove in, I had all the windows and everything closed up. And the windscreen and the tailgate window were just crawling with bees. And I figured it was just getting a bit warm and that made them more active. So as an experiment, I've tried driving with the sunroof open and all the windows open. And so far there's not been a lot of activity. So they're not, it doesn't look like they're getting up and flying outside. They're just not coming off that open hive like all the ones on the outside there. Just, they're not flying anywhere. So maybe they're just happier that they're getting a bit of a breeze. Uh, yesterday the BVAC finally run out of battery before I got home. But luckily, not too far from home, so they weren't unventilated for too long. This is the third day, the third hive. I didn't get all the bees, but what I'll do is I'll pack these ones in and then I'll go back tomorrow morning with the bee vac and just get the last stragglers. There might be, there might be a few thousand bees left over by then. After a few days, the demolishing guys will come in. It was funny, yesterday, the demolishing guy turned up to have a look at the job and he says <laughs> he's allergic to bees, but he still climbed up there and had a look around and, well, he didn't get stung, so that's a good thing. So I don't know if I was allergic, meaning that you get anaphylaxis if you get stung. I wouldn't be going anywhere near it. I got away with no sting so far, so I had a good day today. Arrived. What do you know? They're still there. Very cool. I'll get these girls sorted and bedded down for the day. Got them down in the bee yard. I'm just going to show you what I do. I've rubber banded up as much brood comb as I could save, and now I'm going to transfer it from my rescue box and put it into its permanent box. I've got a couple of frames of drawn comb that they might use. I didn't get eight frames of brood. I think I had one spare, so I could put that in there. I'll just open him up. 
they're pretty calm I did get quite a few bees I'm just going to transfer you can see all the rubber bands along there yeah that last one is just a vacant one and I'll just move them over one at a time so we've got three bits of comb there that I've saved capped brood on either side Some uncapped cells so it's definitely worth rescuing more cap brood given the best shot as possible they're super calm and that makes me hopeful that the queen is in here somewhere I'm not going to search for her so some more grubs have jumped out not looking good so they're hanging there some more capped brood a little bit of uncapped I didn't see eggs but that just might be my eyesight so they've clustered up on this empty frame and the wall a fair bit so I'm going to get as much as I can and I'll just get them over here and shake them in I've got the BVAC still running here keeping them cool I can switch that off now Unplug that, shut the door. Now these bees won't have smelt the queen in a long time. They'll be humming a bit. I'll just give them a little tap just to get them off the top. And look at that, there's a ton of them. I'm going to just tip them in. Hopefully most of them will go inside one other thing I'm going to do is just get this board put it as a ramp up to the, the entrance if any of these bees left in the bucket can climb up and enter in that way that certainly got them active not as calm as the ones that were in the box and again that makes me hopeful that the queen is inside there somewhere now I'm just going to close up I haven't got an inner cover <laughs> run out of a lot of gear so I'm just going to gently, come on girls, out of the way. So I'm just going to use this skateboard as a inner cover for now. Now the ramp idea is a bit like doing a Taranoff split. And then you dump everyone at the base of the ramp and their instinct, particularly if they can smell the queen, is to climb up. In this box there's still quite a lot of bees there. There's also a whole bunch of debris and rubbish and that's why I didn't want to tip that into the new box because I'd be transferring all that rubbish in there as well. So I'm going to just tip these guys out on the front. Hopefully they'll go up the little ramp if they get a bit of a whip. The queen pheromones, hopefully they'll decide to climb up. I'm going to give it a little tap and tip. All that debris will be down there. I might be able to shake a few more of them out. There's quite a lot hanging in there. It looks like they're starting to climb a little bit. They'll find their way up and in. Just like a Taranoff Sprit. The other part of what I want to do here is that I've got buckets of honeycomb and of course while I'm at work collecting all this stuff the bees are going nuts all over the wax I don't want to kill all those bees so I'll save as many as I can 
But what I do is just keep a lid on the bucket that I'm going to throw it in. Shake off the wax from the bees from that. Nah. So this is what happens in a bucket that's not ventilated. Uh, they've all perished in the drive home. So that's a bugger. Yesterday I got away with it. Didn't get away with it today. It sounds like that was shut right down there, all dead too. So I'm cover, recover it so the new bees don't get onto it. Look, these ones are alive. Maybe it was, maybe these two got completely sealed up and this one didn't, but that's thrumming with bees. So I'll just reach in and grab comb and shake them off and chuck it in. By shaking it off onto the ramp, it should encourage more bees to climb up and it might just set the pattern for the rest of them then. Some bees still get into this new bucket, but it minimises the losses. Look. Some brave souls do all of this with no gloves, <laughs> even no gear, sometimes just a veil or not even a veil. Ah, damned if I could do that. And if you're a beginner, I certainly wouldn't be aspiring to do it without a, a gear, particularly if you haven't been stung much and you don't know how you react. I know whenever I get stung in the face, I swell up. Legs and arms. Not a bad thing. It stings a bit, of course. No pun intended. So all that came in this bucket was a little bit of dead brood, tiny little bits of leftover brood that were too small to strap in. And a bit of dry comb. So that's going to be just for melting down. The other two buckets were all honey. So maybe something to do with that killed them as well. The next thing is to go through and pick out all the dead bees from the comb before I press it because I don't want dead bee juice in all the stuff. I'm videoing. No, it's all right. That's my gorgeous wife, Marie, talking to me. <laughs> That's all of that lot, and I've got a few bits of comb from yesterday's over there, so I'll grab that too. So, there are bees in there, more wanted to get in, but not letting them in. So you can see down here that they are climbing up, some are climbing up that way, but mostly they're going in. That's a good sign. Everyone's humming a fair bit now, but originally when I first got here the box was quiet. Quite a lot of bees in there, so that's a sign that I might have got the queens. I'm just going to throw this little temporary lid on because I'm out of gear. I've got to make some lids. Come on girls, out of the way. And that's it for them, I'll leave them just to settle. It's only about, I think it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. 
so it'll gradually get cool and hopefully they'll all move inside. That's our third colony out of an expected two. I thought it was a new colony because I didn't pick it up on the previous one, but it landed up being a very well established colony that filled that whole cavity. I got a couple of buckets of honey comb out of it. We'll see how, how much honey I squeeze out of that. And I got a good lot of bees and I'm pretty hopeful I've got the queen. Not so sure about yesterday's colony. They settled in pretty well. They were orienting this morning for about 25 minutes and then they seem to have settled in. So I'll just show you them now. As you can see, activity at the entrance, coming and going. They're not loud. That might be a sign that I've got a queen, but I'm just gonna let them settle for a week and wait for some more good weather, or if we don't lose this good weather, I'll open them up and just see how well, I, I don't wanna disturb them this soon after a major disruption. And here's the uh, first colony that we got on day one, the one on the right hand side. They've settled in pretty nicely too, lots of activity. So I'm pretty happy with how they've turned out. Again, I don't know if I've got the queen here, but the fact that they were pretty calm and quiet in the box on the trip home and even transferring them across and into this box pretty calm so I'm very hopeful that I've got the Queen there too. Time will tell. Well, they certainly seem happy with their new home. They continue to wander their way up so most of the bees that I dumped on the floor on the ground in front have now moved up and into the box. That's promising. I thought I was done yesterday and all I had to do was come back today and vacuum up the stragglers. But what I found was another cavity full of comb. It's all honey and empty comb and obviously a mass of bees. Back with a bucket to fill up with honey and comb and keep vacuuming up all these bees. That was a bit of a surprise. It's funny, it didn't come up on the heat signature when I first uh, took the picture of it a few weeks ago. I think they just weren't down there at the time. They were only up in the top cavity that I emptied yesterday. Be prepared. There's always a few surprises. All done. I vacuumed up all I could. I got all that wax and full, mostly full of honey. I put it in a bucket. Knocked out these walls to make it less attractive for them to stay put. You can still see a whole bunch of bees there, but Realistically, I just can't vacuum them up. They're all everywhere. I could be here for hours and I'm running out of time that I'm allowed to be on this site. As much as I'd love to catch all these other bees flying around, it's just not gonna happen. So what'll happen with these guys is that they'll rob out whatever's left, any honey that's spilt and any tiny bits of wax. And, but without a colony, they'll perish. The uh, builders are due in next week. I don't expect these bees to be hanging around in that time. And if they are, they'll be pretty subdued. That's it for this job. I'll take this honey home and squeeze it out and probably get another, who knows, 15 kilos or more. I've got the other three colonies that I've collected now. They're going strong. I've just c collected another bucket full of bees from this third colony. All right for now, cheers. So it's a few weeks after that last colony I did. It's now the 23rd of May. A few things have happened since then. That third colony that looked so strong and so many numbers actually landed up absconding. They hung around long enough for all of that capped brood to emerge. Maybe within a week of that, they shot through and completely empty. I was quite surprised at that. The other two colonies, they're still going. Two out of three is not bad. I hope you enjoyed the content here. I know it took a long time and maybe I go a bit slow for you, but I hope you learned something. I hope 
that you won't be afraid to get in there and do your own cutouts. It's not that hard. Just take your time, be methodical, wear your gear, and that's a great way to score freebies. Other ways are swarm catching. So I'll do one on swarm catching too, as well as put a few more videos together for different cutouts because there's different methods for different types of places. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you got this far, man, I really appreciate that. So thumbs up if you can and subscribe. That'd be great. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.